Welcome to Mill Spouse Matters, the podcast dedicated to encouraging military spouses. I'm Jen McDonald, and I was a military spouse for nearly 30 years until my husband's retirement. I'm also now the mom of an active duty son, a longtime writer for the military spouse world, and the author of the book, You Are Not Alone, Encouragement for the Heart of a Military Spouse. I created this podcast to bring you inspiration as you navigate your own military life, which can be amazing while also challenging. Whether you're dealing with a move, deployment, raising military kids, keeping your military marriage strong, or employment issues, we're going to talk about it. Military spouses, we're only stronger together. My goal is to bring you realistic hope and support for your own mill spouse journey. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this bonus episode of Mill Spouse Matters. So coming on the heels of episode 41, where we talked about difficult conversations and some resources for being an ally to our Black friends, family, and the greater community, I thought it would be great to have a discussion of kind of where do we go from here? And I'm so happy today to be joined by Jennifer Brantley, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. So Jennifer Brantley is a mill spouse of many hats. She's wife to an Air Force chaplain, but has definitely carved out her own lane. An attorney by trade, Jennifer has alternately worked as senior attorney at an Atlanta law firm, served as a crisis communications consultant for companies like the Georgia Lottery and the Archdiocese of Atlanta, and managed multi-million dollar contracts for Nebraska's Department of Health and Human Services. She's also the founder of More Than a Mrs., a lifestyle blog for military spouses, creator of the Find Me mobile app, and host of the Discard It podcast, where her motto is, you may be scarred, you may have been bruised, but your story isn't over yet. And we will talk a little bit more about the Find Me mobile app in just a minute, but it was created in response to a gap in the military world for minority and diverse military families and the current climate. So with each PCS move, Find Me Mobile connects minority military members and their families to community recommended businesses that welcome both their dollars and their presence. And it was lauded as a modern day green book by Next Gen Mill Spouse. You can find more from Jennifer at morethanamisses.com and on social media as fire underscore Esquire, more underscore than a Mrs. the discard at podcast and at find me mobile. And I will put all the links in the show notes because she <laughs> is in a lot of places. So <laughs> after all that, welcome, Jennifer, you are a busy lady. <laughs> I sure am. And you made it sound so you made me sound so interesting. <laughs> I think you're very Thank interesting. You. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a lot. And I just, oh. I said it to you before we started recording, but I just want to acknowledge the fact that you're taking your time to come along and share your heart about this and give some support and guidance to military spouses about this topic. I just, I know you must be tired of it in some ways, but like you said, it's an important topic. So just thank you again for coming on. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Like you said, it is a super important topic and I'm more than happy to have those conversations where needed. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Well, and we, we talked a little bit on your, intro about your husband as a chaplain. So maybe just tell us a little bit about your background with military spouse life. Oh, absolutely. Um, So as you mentioned, my husband is a chaplain. Uh, We're Air Force, Air Force family. I currently am also an employee for um, the Air Force and we're stationed overseas. So this is our second duty station or his second duty station. And like I told you before, we've kind of been just enjoying the travel life and, Uh um, you know, just enjoying that aspect of military life. And it's, I think it's growing on us. (laughs) Well, (laughs) maybe you can get back to all the fun, exotic travel, (laughs) but all the quarantine. I sure hope so. How is it over there? Are they just, this has nothing to do with our topic. Just curious, like, are are, is it still kind of on lockdown or are you getting more freedoms or? Yeah. So we are getting a lot more freedom. Um, Things have pretty much opened up for the most part. Um, I think Actually, at the end of this month, things will be back to, quote unquote, normal um, with some precautions and continued social distancing. Mm -hmm. You know, some people are being more careful than most, but I think we're pretty much on par with the U.S. in terms of opening things back up. 
Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, I think we're all ready to get back to normal. Well, yeah. I kind of wanted to start with talking about your app that you created because I find it so intriguing and it's called Find Me Mobile. And maybe you could just tell us a little bit about what motivated you to create it and even the response you've had to it. Yeah, so I was motivated to create it actually last year. I was sitting in my office in Nebraska and my husband texts me and he's like, Jennifer, we're going to England. And he's a jokester. People Uh who know my husband know that he loves to laugh. So I thought that he was pranking me. Um, (laughs) And it took a phone call for me to realize, no, this is real. We're actually heading to England after I think we were in Nebraska, maybe a year. Oh, good. Um, so I, you know, immediately I'm excited. I'm looking at all the things. I'm, I'm going to Google Maps and you know, try, kind of trying to pinpoint where we'll be. Um, and I'm like, you know, I know there are certain things that I need before mm-hmm. I actually feel like I'm at home. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's you know, places to grocery shop, somewhere to get my hair done. At the right. time, I had a pixie cut, so that's a little difficult. You have to keep getting it cut. Difficult to uh-huh. maintain. And I realized that there was nothing out there that made that process easy for me. There was nothing out there that made moving to a different duty station actually feel like home. Mm. And the idea came to me for this, you know, for the Find Me Mobile app, because I figured if I felt this way, if I was having this difficulty, other people had to be in the same position and feel the same way. Right. Um, So that's kind of uh, what incited the idea for Find Me Mobile. And then just knowing that military installations are often in rural locations Mm -hmm. um, and it's not so easy for certain needs to be met, especially for the minority community. That's kind Mm -hmm. of what brought that to be. And thus far, the reaction has been pretty good. A lot of people have been super receptive, especially, I think, right now where our attention is, again, being focused Mm -hmm. on some perceived disparities. Um, So it's it's yeah, it's been good. I've had about. 500 downloads since we launched at the end, uh, I think it was the end of April. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's been, yeah, it's been pretty good. That's a good growth rate, I think. Oh, yeah. So if somebody has downloaded the app, do they leave a review or recommend a place or how, how do the, you know, businesses pop up for people using the app? Absolutely. So the listings are vetted beforehand. Um, They're all community recommended. So I kind of gathered these businesses from different Facebook groups, um, from conducting focus groups and asking people, you know, what do you recommend where you're stationed? Mm -hmm. Um, And so people, once they download the app, can actually go in. And if they found somewhere at their current duty station, they can input that listing themselves Mm -hmm. um, as a recommendation. And yes, they can also review. So if they, you know, find a business and go and visit it, they can leave their review and say, you know, I enjoyed I enjoyed my experience here. You know, it wasn't so great. I don't agree that, you know, this uh, Uh, listing should be in the directory. And then they can check in as well once they're there. Well, I think that's amazing that you did that. And I also love one of the places I saw you described it as a tool that allies can also use if they're planning an outing with minority friends or family, like going out to dinner and making sure everybody feels comfortable and welcome. And, you know, I wouldn't have even thought of that. So yeah, I think that's such a great idea. And I, I wish you all the best of luck with that because I think it will be <laughs> very useful. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I know this summer has just been kind of crazy so far. And with the death of George Floyd and then all of the aftermath of that, many of us posted, you know, a black square on social media. Or we used a hashtag mm-hmm. or we made a conscious effort to support black businesses or things like that. And so I feel like we're kind of coming to a point and I was telling you, my daughter even said, well, now what, you know, where do we go mm-hmm. from here? And I know that you don't speak for everybody, but I thought you would have a perspective of some, maybe some thoughts and suggestions about that. Absolutely. So it's amazing. I think how social media kind of um, narrates our lives, mm-hmm. because I, I think I've seen kind of the same thing where For a few weeks there, we had an influx of people, you know, just typing, even myself. I was constantly on social media typing Mm -hmm. statuses that were informative or educational. Um, I've always done that. I love Facebook memories because I can go back and see, oh, no, I've I've been talking about this issue. 
But as it begins to kind of disappear, you know, people may feel like, okay, uh, we're on to the next thing or this may not be. (laughs) Yeah, we're good now. And that, you know, that's not the case. You know, Mm -hmm. people are maybe not, maybe we're fatigued from Mm -hmm. talking about it. You know, social media, you can be so inundated with information and people's opinions. You kind of just have to step away from it at some point. I know I've had to do that, but that doesn't mean that it's over. Um, And so there are some some things that we can continue to do regardless of of social media, things that we can do to go beyond, you know, I see you, I hear you Mm -hmm. and to get to I stand with you, I speak with you. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think some of the most important things would be one to continue just educating ourselves, even for the black community, the minority community. There are so many things that occurred in history, not just black history, but in history Mm -hmm. that we weren't taught um, and didn't know about in school. So I think education is a huge piece because Mm -hmm. some things were omitted from our history books um, and from our history lessons. So in order to really understand and to speak about things, we have to educate ourselves about, you know, what really happened, what what piece of this is missing. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we can move on to the next piece, which is being able to have ongoing difficult conversations and and playing a part in correcting, you know, maybe some misbehaviors when we see uh, other people Mm -hmm. doing them. Um, And so I think that would be the next major step is to go beyond, you know, listening and hearing and getting the education piece to actually kind of speaking up when you see someone else saying or doing something that, you know, in your gut is not of God and and is not right. 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 And that would be for anyone, I think. Absolutely. I, I know that you talked about, you know, that it really is simple. I was mm-hmm. watching your military family town hall. I think that's what it was called yes. that you spoke at. And so um, I'll link to that if somebody wants to go watch that. It was like, a, you know, several people. And you talked about, you know, not going to extremes and that it really is simple, not easy. That resonated with me because it, to me, it boils down to love other people, mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and. Mm-hmm. And if if we actually did that, it it sounds very uh, rainbow colored glasses and all that stuff. But, (laughs) but, you know, I think it's, it really is just, I think of my grandmother or people like that, that were just so open and, you know, a woman ahead of her time. And really that was her motto. It Mm -hmm. wasn't political. It wasn't anything Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like that. And I, and I don't know if you, if you want to speak to that or if that just, if that is too simple or if that. No. You know what? That's actually precisely what I meant. So I'm a preacher's wife. And that's that's always my go to. And when I said it could all be so simple, that is precisely what I meant, because, Mm -hmm. you know, we're commanded to love each other. We can't say, um, you know, that we love God or that we love other people and then exclude a certain group from from that category. Um, And again, that does apply to everyone. So, you know, you can't you can't be exclusive. Your love can't be exclusive. And it should really just be as easy as realizing that, yes, there are differences that exist between us. But at the root of it, it's a human rights issue. Right. Because Mm -hmm. we're all human. That is something that we share and that, you know, that we have in common um, and that we have to to realize and recognize and remember and, and put that into effect, you know, into effect, even just catching ourselves when we're thinking or saying some things that contravene that and that go against that idea. Yeah, that's it's so true. And I think it's hard to put a, aside some of the past hurts or, you know, generalizations about each other and, and just see each other as people set some of that aside at times. And and that, I think, has got to be difficult if you've been hurt repeatedly by a group of people as a black community that's that's got to be tough to work through. I, I can't imagine, you know, yeah. I, I don't know if there's any specific resources you'd recommend or I know your podcast. I, you've talked about it a couple of times. Yes, I definitely have. Um, and there are some other great podcasts out there. I think Spotify, you know, so many people are amplifying black voices right now. There's a plethora mm-hmm. of resources out there. But Spotify has a, a, a list of podcasts that if you go to, you can kind of get an idea of the black voice and what some mm-hmm. issues are. Mm -hmm. Um, that relate to us and that relate to the movement. Um, There are so many documentaries out there, uh, even movies like Fruitvale Station, Selma, Mm -hmm. which is Mm -hmm. about Martin Luther King. Um, There's a documentary called 13th, which speaks to the mass incarceration of uh, black men specifically Mm -hmm. and the education to prison pipeline, Mm -hmm. um, which is a thing. And as an attorney, I'm super, super familiar with that and how that works. Mm -hmm. Um, And then 
I would say familiarize yourself with activists like James Baldwin, who is also a novelist. Um, There's a documentary about him called I Am Not Your Negro. Mm. And then there are some great books out there, too. I am a book reader, always have been. But How to Be Anti-Racist by uh, Ibram Kendi is a good one, because I think it's important to realize that it's, you know, not enough for us to be silent and not to go along with those who may be being racist, but at some point we have to actively be anti-racist and right. and use our voices when we can. So yeah, right. those are some resources I would definitely recommend. And I may cut this part out, but I'm going to tell you this real quick. When I did uh-huh. episode 41, mm-hmm. um, one of my friends is a black pastor and I was bouncing some stuff off of him of whether uh-huh. I should do it or not, because I didn't want it to be misconstrued. And he was like, just get you ready. If you decide to do this and it really did boil down to, I had a platform and Mm -hmm. I felt like I was supposed to use it in some way. And it was, and it's not like I'm so brave or so wonderful, but it was, (laughs) I did face a kind of a a decision like, okay, this could be totally misunderstood. Mm -hmm. This could be totally misunderstood that as a white woman, I'm trying to tell people how to be anti-racist and you know, that's not my wheelhouse. You know what I mean? Or it, it came down to either way I do it. If I don't do it, I'm going to be judged. If I do it, I'm going to be judged. <laughs> and, <laughs> There's no just, way. <laughs> there, so I was like, I'm going to do what I think is right. And he just said, yeah. you know, it's so important. Thank uh-huh. you for doing that. Thank you for being part of the conversation and being willing. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I might just cut that out because that's very, that sounds very self-serving, but just. Well, no, I don't <laughs> think it is. I really don't think it is at all. I think um, that actually speaks precisely to what I'm saying because we have to, you know, use our voice and use our platforms. If we have that, it's, it's God given. There's a reason that we have it. Um, And what you said about, I had to do what was right. I think that's the, the kicker right there. Yeah. It'd have been easy to ignore it. And I, everybody has to make their decision Mm -hmm. that have chosen to just stay out of the conversation. And I'm like, but that's also, that's also a decision that, that speaks very loudly Mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure people notice no judgment, but you know, it's just, it's just interesting to kind of see how everybody has handled it, I guess. Yep. <laughs> yes. I would agree. The, <laughs> interesting may not be the one, <laughs> but yeah, I will definitely link to all the resources you recommended and check those out for you, Jennifer. I just am curious as a military spouse or even in general, when it comes down to racism and, you know, prejudice issues, what has been your biggest frustration? Or maybe you can share a couple of experiences that you've had. Yeah, so I think I've been fortunate in terms of my experience with the military community. But I have seen, I guess, secondhand some examples of uh, uh, discriminatory behaviors, um, unfortunately, in our community. And I think it's always been easiest. And that's part of my frustration is for those behaviors to occur online. Oh. Um, versus in person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, a, a little bit of bullying. Um, I know here recently there was a young child who was on a playground, um, on base playing with a, you know, a, a black child and something, you know, they were just having a conversation and she said, at least I'm not black. Oh gosh. Um, like it's a horrible, <laughs> it's a horrible thing to be mm. black. And, you know, that's a learned behavior. It came from somewhere. Right. So, you know, experiences like that. And then for me, the experiences that I have had have been outside of not necessarily in the military community. But, you know, when all of this started uh, gaining traction, I'll say I won't say when it started, because it's kind of been something that's been ongoing, not kind of it's been something that's been ongoing for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Um, But when it gained traction this year, I had people come to my blog page and my social media on posts that were public and say, you know, well, if you don't like it here, if you don't feel you're being treated equally, go to Africa. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I'm like, well, first of all, Africa is a lovely place. I would love, <laughs> I would love to visit. I would love to visit. And second, it's frustrating because the post that I put out, I'm very intentional about mm-hmm. what I say. I'm very intentional with my words. I'm a Christian. You know, I never and you're, want and to you're a smart lady. I and mean, I'm it's not like you're lady. just throwing you know, stuff I'm not, out there. I'm not just throwing things out there. Yeah. Um. And I never say anything about, you know, being treated 
wanting special treatment because that's not what the goal is here. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's just been kind of a frustration is for people to just kind of have these ideals in their heads that even when they read something, they don't really read it. They don't really comprehend what's being said just because they're so focused on what they've been taught. Uh, And that goes both ways. Yeah, it's it's ignorant. Okay, you say it for me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it makes me so mad. I'm like, they're it just does. There to react and yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. And that does not help the conversation no. whatsoever. And so we have to listen to understand and not to respond. It's a cliche mm-hmm. to say it, but you know, that's been the biggest thing for me is, you know, pay attention to what's, what we're really saying, you know, pay attention to what the message really is. It isn't just about one person dying or, being Mm -hmm. killed. You know, it's not just about that. It's not just about physical death. It's about things like microaggressions that occur in the workplace. And some things happen and we don't even think about them. And it's just because we were, uh, we have different cultures. Right. Um, And we say these things not realizing how harmful they are. It just doesn't click with us because we didn't grow up in this other culture. So, so yeah, I think that's, that's been the biggest frustration is having people who kind of hide behind their keyboards and, (sighs) And spew cowards. spew hate, <laughs> yep, cowards, and spew hate that way, um, and then those who just aren't really willing to listen, right. um, because it's a waste of energy. Those are the types of conversations that are fatiguing and, <laughs> and that are tiresome. Well, I'm um, curious if you, if it's obviously a troll, do you just delete it, or do you respond, or do you leave it for other people to respond, or how do you handle I, those? Yeah, so I respond and then I delete. <laughs> My <laughs> husband is like Jennifer, don't respond. But I, I can't help it. I have to. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I respond, but I respond and I give all credit to God in kindness every time. There have been a mm-hmm. couple of times when I've had comments that were really uh, out of the way, extremely rude. And I had a, you know, just a little flash, little blackout for, sure. <laughs> for a moment, mm-hmm. um, but quickly came to myself and responded, you know, well, I don't remember what I said. God loves you or something like that to this one person. And uh, they were like, you know, keep your God to yourself. We don't. We don't want you. I'm like, well, he loves you anyway. And I love you. Dumb, dumb. <laughs> and you're blocked. OK, <laughs> but at least I said it. And, you know, I didn't give you what you wanted, which was to get a rise out of me. Right. Um, you didn't get that. And I gave you love in return to your, you know, whatever caused you to react that way to. I think the person that responded, that I had that conversation with, I just commented on a post that said, I feel hurt right now. And their response was, oh, you know, F off. And then okay. I'm like, oh, well, God loves you. And, the, and then that conversation happened. Wow. <laughs> yeah. People will just, uh, social media is that double edged thing. It's like so wonderful, but then so awful too at the same mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, I think you responded better than I would have. That's well, first. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and on the, along those lines, like, are, what are you seeing that's working maybe in, in your spouse community or even online? Are you seeing things that encourage you as far as this whole conversation goes? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so a lot of spouses in particular have approached me for to have group discussions. Mm -hmm. Um, So we've done a few of those and they've been really great where people have come with open minds and we've just kind of talked issues out, Mm -hmm. Um, seeing people not be afraid to ask questions. Yeah, I think that's a really big thing um, because sometimes we're afraid to ask questions because we don't want to say the wrong thing or we don't want to seem like Mm -hmm. we're uninformed. Um, Mm -hmm. But if you don't ask those questions, you won't get the answers that you need. You won't find out more about the black community and, you know, what we've experienced so, yeah, I would that that's what I would say. Oh, that's good. And and I, I like that you are open to it because I think people are not afraid, but they're they are hmm, maybe don't want to say the wrong things. They feel like there's mm-hmm. already been so much harm done and they don't want to word things wrong or they don't want to use terminology that's not correct. And so they might not say anything. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, just being open and honest and trying to be helpful can go a long way. I, I think for most people, I mean, there's going to be some people that are annoyed no matter what you do, <laughs> <laughs> but all, all we can do is keep trying, you know, all we can do is keep trying. Well, tell us a little bit about your podcast and your blog and any other projects. You know, I know we talked about the, the app, but you also have a podcast. Yes, I do. So my podcast is called the discarded podcast. Um, and it's spelled discard it, it, mm-hmm. but pronounced discarded. 
um, because it, it definitely talks about what it feels like to feel that you have been discarded. It isn't just for military spouses, but I think it's applicable to us because oftentimes, you know, we feel that we have been kind of put to the wayside. You know, it's difficult for us to find employment with every PCS and then just generally to feel that you do not belong. Mm -hmm. So we kind of tackle those issues. You know, what do I need to let go of in order to reach the next page in my own life story? Mm -hmm. Um, And we talk about ways to realize that your story is is important. You should never diminish it or minimize what your story is um, or feel that you're not important or that you're an imposter. And we talk about ways to kind of overcome those self, that negative self-talk and that doubt. And I have different guests on and we kind of talk to those issues, including therapists, military spouses who have done great things. And then I also have More Than a Mrs., which is a more general blog where I just talk about tips and tricks for being more than other people say that you are. So being more than just a military spouse, that one is military spouse specific and being more than someone's wife, because you are so much more than that. Mm -hmm. Um, And and just ways to get people to see that and ways for you to remind yourself that you are more. Oh, well, that's awesome. And I I hope listeners will go and check all of that out. I'm just kind of in awe. I'm thinking you're an attorney and then you're also doing all these things on the side. That's (laughs) <laughs> what made Tiring. you decide to start a, a podcast? <laughs> just felt called? I, I did. I just felt called because um, I've always been an orator. I love public speaking. Um, and even here, once we got here, I was holding different events, uh-huh. you know, and trying to get male spouses to come to come out and convey these messages that I feel, you know, that the Lord gave me words of encouragement. I'm not a preacher. That's my husband. But you know, I do have a message to get out. And I'm like, well, a podcast would be an easier way versus trying to yes. have events, especially here in England. It's so difficult for oh. people to get around. So I'm like, yeah, that's podcast. We can record yeah. it. People can listen, <laughs> can listen, when, it'll be you easy. know, when they can. <laughs> right. It'll be easier. I think as um, long as you have a message and feel that calling, because I because yeah. I've done mine now for two years and I've taken a couple of breaks and uh-huh. I'm like, as long as I feel that someone's needing to hear it and I'm hearing back from people that it's worthwhile and I feel that call, I'll keep doing it, you know, because yeah. you yeah. kind of can't help yourself mm-hmm. and as long as it's useful. <laughs> yes, that's that's the key thing. As long as it's useful. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's incredible. And I really would love for you to come back on another time and just come back on the podcast and talk some more about other issues, too. Um, did you have anything you wanted to add to our talk today, Any, like resources or anything like that that you didn't happen to mention? Uh, I don't I don't think so. I think that we covered pretty much everything. I think um, it's important for everyone out there just to remember, you know, we're all different. We should embrace those differences on all sides. Um, and realize that we do all have these implicit biases. So everyone has those, you know, and don't feel that this is exclusive to you. It's something that everyone has. Um, And we're highlighting this particular issue right now. And I'm so grateful for everyone who has come to the table and been part of the conversation. And I just encourage you to continue looking for resources and ways to learn more yourself, not just about the black community, but about other minority communities um, the struggles that they've had and just educate yourself on the hidden history. Right. Um, and I think that that would help so much when it comes to having these discussions and talking about the hard things. Yes. Well, thank you again for coming on and sharing and listeners remember find her at more than a com, and we'll link to all of the places she's on social. She's lots of places and has lots of good information. And I loved the, series of posts you put out, you know, this summer, there's just a lot there. So everybody go and check that out. So thank you again, Jennifer, for taking your time to come and share with us. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Mill Spouse Matters podcast. Connect with me at millspousematters.com or on social media as at millspousematters. You can find my book, You Are Not Alone, Encouragement for the Heart of a Military Spouse, on Amazon and other booksellers. Love the show? Please leave a five-star review in whatever podcast player you're listening and then share it with someone else who could use it too. Until next time, have a great week.